Hi and welcome to The Gardening Me. I'm Margaret and today I am here on my little hilltop garden where I have a few raised beds laid out. In the last video I showed you my main raised bed area and this is kind of a supplemental area. By the way, it's freezing cold. I had to come out and fertilize my garlic so I thought I would get this video done as well. It's one degree right now and the wind chill is minus four. So it's not pleasant, but carrying on. Um, this raised bed area is a supplemental area where I have three asparagus beds that are obviously permanent and then I have six raised other raised beds that are also the standard eight by four that I grow other things in. This is um, a very utilitarian area. This whole hilltop was basically there was a big fire pit in the middle and I mean it was six feet across it was ridiculously big um, and around it was weeds and a ton of invasives. We have buckthorn and garlic mustard and Virginia creeper, wild grape. It's crazy. So I kind of carved out this little area where I'm basically keeping on top of anything that comes up, but surrounding it is, it's something we want to deal with. Unfortunately, these are the kind of things where just cutting something back is not enough and everything is so Thick. I do do a little bit every year, but it is quite a big area and it's also very hilly and slopey behind where the raised beds are. It's just difficult to access. Normally on this hilltop, what I do is I grow primarily vegetables that you don't have to come every day and check on and harvest from. So we're talking about the ones that take quite a long time to get to maturity and then a lot of them you will harvest more or less all at once. For example, the potatoes are always up here, the garlic um, is always up here, the onions are usually up here but I'm actually thinking this year I may put the onions um, in the main raised bed area, I'm not sure. Um, squash I will often put up here as well as beans especially dried beans so any beans that I'm growing for drying and not just the snap beans that kind of thing I will often put up here as well and carrots as well I will do up here so that's generally what I do here in this area oh it's windy too today I wanted to talk about the garlic bed I love garlic. It is one of the first things that I wanted to grow. I'm a huge garlic fan in the kitchen and it's one of those vegetables that's also so easy to grow. You literally plop a clove in the ground in the fall when it's awesome because there's really not a whole lot you're doing at that point in time. It's not like in the spring where you have a thousand different things you need to get done. So you put your clove of garlic in the ground and then cover it up with some straw and wait around all winter and then in the spring it magically just starts coming up all on its own. So really the only thing I do to this bed, I'll amend it of course when I'm planting the garlic. I usually add compost. Last year I added compost from my compost bins which are also over here. Um, and now I will side dress it. I'm going to be dressing it with a little bit of um, organic granular fertilizer. And then in a few weeks around the end of May I will side dress it again and I'm really hoping to be on the ball this year because a lot of years I will often miss one or the other. Usually it's the first one. I'm so busy in the start of the season that I'll completely forget to do the first round of fertilizing and then next thing you know it's middle of May and the next round's in a week so. But this year I want to be more on it. I planted 147 cloves of garlic 
last fall. And that's pretty standard for me. I plant an entire eight by four bed of garlic. I space the garlic about five inches apart. It's a tiny bit less, I think, than the optimal that they say, which is around six inches. But I really love variety in garlic. And I'm not sure why. There is a little bit of variation in taste, I guess. If I was doing a side-by-side -side taste test, I'm sure I would notice differences. But generally speaking, it's not a huge difference where you're thinking, oh, this garlic tastes completely different than anything I've ever tasted before. All of it is pretty garlicky, so, and it's all delicious. But I do grow nine different varieties of garlic, and I love them all. There are differences, however, in terms of how large the bulbs get, as well as the cloves themselves because certain varieties of garlic have huge cloves and you'll only get maybe three or four. Two of the varieties that I grow that have especially big cloves are one called Portugal One and another variety called Sweet Candy. That's it. So those two have huge cloves and each bulb only contains maybe three or four cloves. The other ones are pretty much standard six, seven cloves, pretty good size as well, but not huge. And then there is at least one I grow, maybe maybe more than that, but one that called Pitarelli that has relatively small cloves, but very, very flavorful. So, but like I said, they're all flavorful. All of these garlic varieties um, are from my own stock that I have had for years now. I think the first time I purchased garlic for planting was around 2011, or sorry, not 11, 2012 or 13, something like that. And then I went to a garlic festival a couple of years later and I purchased a whole bunch of other varieties as well. So all of those are here. I basically harvest the garlic in August usually, end of July, early August, and then I will take the biggest cloves from each variety and plant those in October. There are two new to me varieties in here. Well, one new, new to me, and that's one called Chestnut Red. And that one I actually purchased last fall. I happened to be at a garden, a garden center. I saw this on a display and I couldn't help myself. I grabbed it. And then there's also another one that I'm kind of trying out. And it's, I've been growing it for a couple of years now, but it's this one that I saw at a farmer's market called Puss Lynch Wild. And apparently it's kind of like a wild garlic or something, I'm not really sure. But the, the cloves themselves were teeny. And I am talking teeny tiny little cloves, but I thought because it's a local wild garlic, I had to try it. So. I planted it. The following year, again, I got teeny tiny cloves from it. I didn't end up eating any of it. I decided just to plant all the teeny tiny cloves I got, but I think they were a little tiny bit bigger than the year before. So I'm hoping if I nurture it for two, three years, maybe it will be at a size. I mean, it's so tiny, you can't even really cook with it that well. It's very um, finicky to peel. So, yeah, we'll see how it turns out if it, I do keep track of how the garlic does. It's one of the few crops that I keep track of how much I harvest and how big the cloves are and how big the bulbs are and that kind of thing. So we'll see how that one does. And the last thing is I have taken the straw off of the garlic bed. It's actually piled up here. I'll be using that for my potato bed when I plant the potatoes. So I, over the years, I've on and off, sometimes used straw in the bed all season. Other times I've taken the straw off and haven't bothered to put it on. Because I am using a granular fertilizer, which is something I, last year I think I used a liquid fertilizer, um, a, a sea uh, or a fish emulsion kelp fertilizer. And the garlic harvest was good, but I think it could have been better. And then when I looked back at my notes, I noticed a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, four years ago, I used the granular fertilizer and the fertilizer I'm using is called Sustain. 
and I used that and I had a really good harvest that year and actually that year I also did not cover the garlic back up once I took the straw off and added the fertilizer I just left it uncovered for the season and it it did fine so I'm probably going to be doing that again just for simplicity's sake because I do need to add fertilizer again in a month and in a month's time the garlic will probably be pretty high and it is a right pain to try to get the straw all around the um, garlic stems so I'll probably just leave it off this year is my thought. I will find photos of all of the garlic varieties that I have grown put those up on the screen maybe do a little music on there I've never done that before so we'll see how that goes then I will side dress these beds and I'll show you how I do that <music> Okay, I'm trying to cover the microphone here. I'm not sure if it's working. Here's the garlic bed. Here is my little tags. Oh, and just a quick thing. This is what I use for tags. I find a lot of the times, especially for stuff like this, where it's in there for a long period of time, these little tags here, or these little knives, are perfect because they're super sturdy and they don't break easily like a lot of the other tags do especially over the winter and stuff like that and i even have them permanently with a label maker put the names on here and these label maker things they don't fade so that's another big plus okay, so here's the sustain you grab a little bit you just put it on either side of the plant up and down the rows like that. Then I grab a little cultivator and I just work it in lightly. And I mean lightly, it's barely going into the soil like this. And that's it. You don't want to disturb the plants themselves. You don't want to go anywhere near here, just right in between there. And just like I said, lightly. And that's it. I mean, it's super easy and it'll probably take me to do this whole bed. I don't know, like a couple of minutes really at the most. So I'm going to get doing this. So that was that. And it's not getting any warmer or less windy and I'm frozen. <laughs> so I'm going to go back in. I really hope it is a lot warmer and nicer where you are than it is here today. We are expecting some better weather in the next two or three days. I think tomorrow is still gonna be chilly, but I'm thinking the day after it might be pretty nice. So thank you so much for joining me here today. And I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.